Ah, 2v2, arguably my most hated feature in Clash Royale in general. I had no problem with existing at first until CRL. Clash Royale Esports was the first one I really got into. I went to the World Finals in London and have watched every official event since the game was released. So many games played, so many brackets won, and so many names made. Watching it was always an exciting time. Investing into your favourite players, knowing them as a person, and seeing them triumph is what Esports is all about. Until 2v2. Today I'll be going into a load of points on why this mode is actually bad for the game, bad to play in general, and then bad for esports. This will be less editing and more ranting than usual, but hey, let's get a discussion going. So let's start on why it's bad for Clash Royale in general. How can a different game mode affect my normal 1v1 experience? Well, let's start with the rewards. Ladder 2v2 allows players to cycle through their chest cycle without winning or losing trophies. This means that a player can sit at zero trophies, open up an infinite amount of chests, and then potentially max out their cards. Matchmaking on ladder is determined by your skill level plus your card levels, but if a player is able to grind out card levels with no trophy consequence, they're able to just bypass the skill aspect and just wreck everyone in their trophy range. This counts for 4,000 upwards too. Getting to 4,000 with level 11 cards is about average, I would say. So a player doing that can sit at 4k, play 2v2 for infinite cards, and then be a max player at 4k, able to abuse the system and get free wins on ladder with their OP levels. <laughs> So a lot of you may have missed this, but here's a tweet made by the Rumham. If you didn't know already, he does card balances at Supercell. Somebody simply asked him if Giant Skeleton, a relatively bad card in the 1v1 game, could see a buff due to it being rather bad. Rumi's response was essentially saying, no, because it's already good in 2v2. I agree with that statement as far as not breaking competitive play just to see a Giant Skeleton buff, but it makes me further disagree with having 2p2 in competitive play. If you're going to leave a dead card dead forever in favour of making an inferior game mode a part of competitive Clash Royale, I think we're running into an issue. Balancing should never be done on a secondary casual game mode, just as we shouldn't balance cards around ladder, because we end up with problems like Elite Barbs and Royal Giant. I may never be able to viably play Giant Skeleton just because 2v2 is considered competitive now. A card being good in one game mode doesn't mean that it's out of balance at all. My final point about affecting my normal experience is the 2v2 challenges. These are the worst. For me, I have the ability to stream 2v2 challenges and find a partner that way. However, if you have no CR playing friends or just want to be able to get through it quickly, the teammates you find are unexplainable. Not only do you have no communication to be able to play well with this person, they seem to lack communication between their brain and their hands. Some of the plays I've seen from 2v2 partners give me the reason to uninstall the game. Here's a very shameful Twitch clip from 2017 that proves my point exactly. I am done with this already. I've only played like twice. I'm WHY?! Thank you for the follow, Samuel. Why rage? So, onto why 2v2 itself is just a bad game mode. My first point is a bit mathsy, but let's get into it. To preface, spells are already OP in 2v2 as they can hit potentially double the units for the same cost. Spells are designed with a radius to make them balance around how many units they can hit, and how much damage they potentially deal. In 2v2, this is effectively doubled and makes them super important. Into spell cycle now, crown tower health is at a regular for 1v1. Spell tower damage is at regular for 1v1 too. Elixir is down by 15% from 1v1. Or is it? Technically, no, because you have two players generating that elixir. Punish plays aren't really a thing, as you always have enough elixir to spend. This means that you can spend 6 elixir on a rocket, hit nothing but the tower, and only have your opponents at a 30% advantage in terms of elixir. This is the equivalent to missing arrows in 1v1. You're not going to be punished for it, and because you and your teammate can do this, it's not unviable to do this 6 times in a game and take the tower. With solid defense, this is a win. We know that Supercell don't want spell cycling to be a viable win condition. We know this because as soon as we got one spell cycle deck in the 1v1 meta, they nerfed all spell damage to crown towers by 13%. Now, was Supercell gonna nerf spells again because of 2v2? I really wouldn't be surprised with the tweet from earlier. <laughs> 
onto some more balancing issues, and we see trash like Giant Skeleton and effect spells like Clone and Rage used in 2v2. These cards are never seen in competitive 1v1 as they're just bad. However, because of their splash effects, we see them be used at a high level in 2v2. This is essentially doubling the value of the Giant Skeleton's bomb, or essentially raging double the units, meaning that these cards have the potential to receive 100% buffs. Look at the single targeting attackers like Knight or Musketeer, they're still at the same power level in 2v2 as they're still just 1v1ing troops. This causes a natural unbalance to splash, especially when you're in control of it like the Giant Skeleton. This could even see these trash cards be nerfed around 2v2, meaning they'll never be viable in the normal 1v1 game. As sort of a little side point here, I wanted to bring up the balancing of King Towers. In 1v1, sure activating the King Tower is bad because it's extra DPS, but in 2v2 this is even worse, seeing as the King shoots two different cannons. This makes pushing with cheaper win conditions almost impossible, especially if your opponents are running NATO. And our final point in the gameplay section is me taking a note on the skill cap in 2v2. It's much more basic. The 2v2 modes really just boil down to simply countering cards, one step at a time and hoping that your opponent is too incompetent to defend the push that you sort of build up. <laughs> 1v1 is hard enough as it is to get skilled at. Using the information about 8 cards of your own, 8 cards of your opponent, the elixir of your own, and the elixir of your opponent. With this info, you have to figure out how to manufacture damage onto your opponent's tower. Well, in 2v2, that's twice as hard. Sure, you have a teammate, but conveying all of that information whilst in a live battle of Clash Royale isn't really possible. You now have 16 cards of your own, 16 cards of your opponent, 2 different Lex accounts of your own, and 2 different Lex accounts of your opponent. This is all Swartz not knowing which opponent has which cards, and which opponent is spending which cards. Tracking Cycle on a Lex account comes to being near impossible. <laughs> And lastly, let's move into the esports side of things. To qualify for CTGS, the original Clash Royale esports scene, you had to get 20 wins in a 1v1 challenge and move on to the knockout brackets. The 15 win CRL challenge didn't qualify you for the competitive league, but it does show that Supercell are willing to go above 12 win challenges for 2v2. I have no idea where the future of competitive play lies, however it may just have a 2v2 aspect built into qualifying. For me, this ruins the idea of anyone being able to become a pro. To potentially get 20 wins in a 2v2 challenge will require you to know another good player who is able to sit and grind challenges with you, and most likely on a voice chat as well. If you don't know anybody who fills those requirements, you're probably not making it. Even if you're the best unknown talent in the world, you're definitely not doing it with randoms, as I explained before, and you're probably not doing it with someone under the required skill level either. In 1v1 this isn't an issue because your competitive viability relies on you and you alone. Finally, it's not exactly fun to watch as an eSport for me. With double the cards on the screen, it's sometimes hard to keep track of who's doing what, why they're doing it, how the elixir is going, where the cards are in rotation, their overall game plan, etc, etc. I mean, even the analysis of the casters during games doesn't help the audience to understand what players are doing and why. It's all just very visual description with no deeper layer. Already we're seeing a golem being dropped right off the bat there for Immortals. Watch those little minions in the field. Golem is a really big call here because the band cards today are Poison and Rocket. So that Rocket now not being able to use to stop that golem from pushing. I'm looking at the push coming in the left hand side. Poison would have been nice right about The control style of play. No shade thrown towards the casters, they obviously have limited CR background and to cast a 2v2 event must be more difficult than a 1v1. But it's just somewhat bad to watch things, the strategy behind it is much less. Maybe that's just me though as a total strategy nerd. Anyways, that's the end of the run. However, uh, at the end of these, I prefer not to just leave you with damn I hate everything and would rather offer my solutions to what I identify as problems. For normal 2v2, do not consider it imbalancing. RG and Evarbs are two of the most toxic cards in the game because of their strengths in ladder, but can't be used in tournament standards. Supercell have to choose their main game mode, and I would assume that's 1v1 tournament standards to balance around. Balancing the same card over two different modes won't work, as they have different circumstances. Personally, I'd like to see a potential rework to the 
the towers in 2v2, having two kings doesn't make too much sense, and having a crown tower that's incredibly vulnerable to spells doesn't make too much sense either. Although I just don't touch 2v2 at all, I'm not against them spending time to figure out how to make that game mode balanced. I would also like a way to tell when a different player is playing cards. My final suggestion is to potentially have every player in a 2v2 mode have a colour, and their cards come out tinted that colour. Like in 1v1 how cards are either red or blue, you just add in green and yellow tints so you're able to track elixir and card cycle of each player by knowing who's placing what and what's in their decks. I really believe these changes will allow 2v2 to be a viable Clash Royale competitive game mode without it just being bad. That's all for the round today lads, if you have any comments on the content you know where to leave those, make sure you subscribe and maybe check out another video if you enjoyed this one, and apart from that, peace.